Unfortunately, Kerry Mollis died in August 2019, but he clearly states the PCR test can find almost anything in almost any body. Kerry, how do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this, um, I think misuse PCR is not quite, I don't think you can misuse PCR. Actually. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body, okay? So that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful. But the, the real misuse of it is, is that it, you don't need to test for HIV. You don't need to test for the other 10,000 retroviruses that are unnamed also in the subject. See, somebody that's got HIV generally is going to have almost anything that you can test for because they have definitely been, HIV is a fairly rare virus. There's only one million of us out of 250, 300 million people in America that have that virus. So you have to get around, either your mother had to have it and pass it to you, or you have to really be paying a lot of attention to people that do have it and paying only attention to them and get a pretty good chance of getting it that way. It's hard to get it, but it, if you have it, there's a good chance you've also got a lot of other ones because you've been in the, in the market for you've been, it's been possible for you to get a lot of, it's, it's, it's a, to test for that one and say that has any special meaning is what I think is the problem. Not that PCR has been misused, it's like, it's not an estimation. No, it's a real. It's a really quantitative thing. It How tells you it? something about nature and about what's there. But it 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 allows you to take a very minuscule amount of anything and make it measurable, and then talk about it in meetings and stuff like it is important. See that that that's not a misuse. That's just sort of a misinterpretation. It it is. No, that, that, there's very little of what they call HIV and what's been brought out here by Phil Pot and and, and Isai already. The measurement for it is not is not exact at all. It's not it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples. An apple is an apple. You know, you can get something that's kind of like if you got enough things that look kind of like an apple and you stick them all together, you might think it as an apple. But and, and HIV is like that. Those tests are all based on things that are invisible, and they are the results are inferred in a sense. PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is, but, um, it's, they, but it's not, it doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. That's why it's not. So even if you believe in HIV, it can't tell the difference between virus particles or active live virus. I mean, there's a lot of questions. Even if there is some asymptomatic transmission, in all the history of respiratory-born viruses of any type, asymptomatic transmission has never been the driver of outbreaks. Not just general testing and, and PCR testing, whether you should test asymptomatic people, just symptomatic, how many contacts. Um, Dr. Bhattacharya, what, what is the, uh, this asymptomatic testing with PCR, but particularly I think one of the things that's been put out, the New York Times had an article about a month ago uh, looking at some of the test results in New York and in, uh, I believe, Nevada and Massachusetts. And they found that uh, because the PCR tests are so sensitive that up to 90% of the positives were not identifying live infectious virus. And, um, and then I think there's other, other studies that have come out. I know Oxford's Center for Evidence-Based Medicine says that the, if you have uh, such high sensitivity, you cannot be any, there's no guarantee you're even identifying live virus. Uh, and I think that, I guess, one, just what does that mean for some of the testing and the case numbers that we see? But then two, it seems to me that if you're uh, test positive with no symptoms with a very sensitive PCR test, and they can't even tell you if you're infectious, we're, we're quarantining across the country probably hundreds of thousands or millions of people who 
aren't even contagious. And I think that obviously has a huge cost to society, doesn't seem to be getting a lot of discussion.